Good day, Mr. Israel. Could you please do a focused cerebellar or coordination exam on this patient? Good morning, ma'am. How are you? Good, good. My name is Israel Shingenge. I've been asked by doctor to do a cerebellar exam on you. It will involve me looking at you, touching you, and telling you to do some comments. Is it okay with you? All right. So we are starting off the cerebellar exam or the coordination exam. At first, you just want to look at the patient. Is the patient having obvious what we call trunkal ataxia? Okay. The, the, the whole core of the body is unsteady. So you see the patient sways onto whatever side is typically with a lesion. And that's seen with if you have a lesion in the vermis or the cerebellum. Okay. Otherwise, to do a comprehensive coordination exam, you have to start from the top all the way to the bottom. Okay. So just so you don't forget anything, we start with the eyes. Okay. So when you look at the eyes in primary gaze, ma'am, could you please follow me with only your eyes and don't move your head. Okay. 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 And what we are noticing as we go on the side is this, what we call a physiologic nystigmas. And that's a normal finding. When you go to the extremes, you do experience that uh, uh, physiologic nystigmas. Don't confuse it with a normal nystigma that is pathological. And it's typically the pathological is very sustained. It goes and corrects with a slow drift. Then it goes, then it corrects with a slow drift. That's a pathological one. It's typically very sustained, okay? Which we do not notice here. And nystigmas is a cerebellar sign, okay? Ma'am, could you please repeat after me? British constitution. British constitution. Okay, so if the patient can say that, you do not have to go on to say lapaka, lapaka, paka, papa, kaka, or gaga, gaga, gaga. If the patient can say that very clearly, you cannot pick up any obvious dysarthria, the patient is fine. But the abnormality that you would expect in a cerebellar, it will be slurred staccato, which we do not see. The patient is pronouncing very articulate, and we can pick that up. And now just say, la, 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 la. Say, pa, 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 pa. Pa, 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 pa. Say, ka, 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 ka. Ka, ka, ka. Say, la, pa, ka, la, pa, ka, la, pa, ka. La, pa, ka, la, pa, ka, la, pa, ka. Okay, then could you please spread your hands? Okay, I'm asking you to close your eyes. Okay. So again, what we're trying to test here is what we call rebound phenomena. Okay, you can put them there. So what you notice is that someone with cerebellar, if you push it down, they, they remember they have problem with coordination, with precision, and what they do, sometimes they even make uncoordinated movement. They can hit their face, they go up or down, they are very uncoordinated and some, something you see in a cerebellar a dysfunction, which we do not see here. And the next thing I'm going to ask you, ma'am, I ask you to touch your nose and then you touch my finger. Okay? All right? So you slide that like that. Then you touch your nose. You keep it up here. Yes, then you touch your nose. Then you touch me. Okay? 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 Just keep this up. Yes? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's do it on the other side. Okay. 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 All right, again, remember what we're trying to test here is finger to nose test, okay? Finger to nose test, okay? So the whole mark here is that, number one, we are trying to look for two things. Typically, if you have cerebellar dysfunction, as the patient is coming, he will pass point, he will miss the mark because remember the cerebellum it's not so responsible for your movement, but it's responsible for your precision of movement, okay? For you to specifically target it, that's where the function of the cerebellum comes in. So what you see is that the patient past point is missing the mark, that's seen in cerebellar dysfunction. And another thing that you will look out for is, as the patient approaches the mark, you see him swaying, what we call an intentional tremor, okay? As he reaches the mark, he's struggling in this kind of rotation, you know he has uncoordinated movement. The next thing that I'll ask you to do is to do this, what you call rapid alternating movement. Just do this as fast as you can, but it should be very rhythmic and regular. Okay, do it on the other side. Okay, and again, we cannot see what we call this diadococinesis here. Okay, remember cerebellar problems, they 
cross technically and recross again. And so lesions on the right, if you have dysmetria on the right, you have a lesion on the right. If you have dysmetria on the left, you have a lesion on the left. Okay, so that's useful for uh, localization. All right. We have okay, so we are done with the hands. Okay. Now we move on to the legs, okay? So there is one thing what we call a, a, an abnormality that's called pendular reflux. So what you see in cerebellar, you can test it with a patella hammer sometimes, or you can just give it like that, okay? A normal person, it will swing, then eventually stop like that. Again, we see it on this side. It will swing and stop, okay? In cerebellar dysfunction, some patients can have what you call a pendular reflux. So what will happen is that you swing it, but it will just keep dangling, okay? To keep swinging back and forth. Again, that's a cerebellar. Ma'am, could you please lie down? Okay. The final thing that we typically want to do on a coordination exam, ma'am, I'm going to ask you to grab your right foot and slide it against your shin. Come up and slide it against your shin. All right. Let's go. Good. Good. One more time. All right, can we do it on the other side? And again, remember, don't just do one side. Cerebrum has two hemispheres, okay? And they remember the lesions are on the same side as the pathological dysmetria that you are picking up, okay? We do not see any abnormality in the heel shin. So what you see in cerebellar is that when you tell the patients to do that, number one, they will already be, you will notice there is an uncoordinated movement. They are struggling to do the thing. And as they come up, you see they overshoot, what you call an overshoot, because of the incoordination, they just overshoot, more like what you saw in the uh, rebound phenomena, okay? Which we do not see here, all right? Okay, so ma'am, could you please stand here? Okay, with your, uh, your, your, your legs together, so just like that. What you want to look, look at the patient, does he appear to be already falling onto one side? Again, remember the unsteadiness that you get your trunk ataxia, the patient will fall over one side, okay? Which we do not see here. And the next thing that we can actually test for is what we call Rombeck's test. Remember, Rombeck's test has nothing to do with the cerebellar problem. However, it's to rule out the ataxic, be there being a proprioception loss, okay? So in cerebellar, remember, the patient will be ataxic before he even closes the eyes, okay? But since the patient is not ataxic with the eyes uh, open, we want to test if there is any proprioception loss when he closes the eyes. Remember, for you to stand in space, to know where you are, you need all these three divisions, your vestibular, your eyes, and finally your proprioception for you not to be unsteady like that. And that's the purpose of Rombeck. You remove the eyes, you assume the vestibular is fine, and if you are having unsteadiness upon closing the eyes, you know it's most likely a proprioception problem. And proprioception typically comes from the posterior uh, aspect of the cord. Okay, so ma'am, I'm going to ask you, I'll hold you if you are to fall, you close your eyes. All right, it's fine. Okay, we can see the patient is not unsteady upon closing the eye, so we know the proprioception is One. intact. So ma'am, could you please walk just normally towards there and come back? Okay, again, you are observing the patient, you cannot appreciate, just come. You cannot appreciate any obvious what you call broad-based gait, okay, that we see in cerebellar. Okay, now I'm going to ask you to walk back in a straight line. Okay, again, you are trying to observe, is there any obvious imbalance? The patient is falling, and they typically remember they fall towards the lesion, okay? Again, that's not something we are seeing there, okay? So we are pretty sure that this patient does not have a broad-based gait, and is not uh, imbalanced, so there is no obvious signs of ataxia. All right, ma'am. 
Thank you very much. This concludes the end of the cerebellar exam. I thank you.